Today we are going to review the Ryzen 9 9950X and we are going to compare it against the Ryzen 9 7950X, not just in games, but also in productivity benchmarks to help you guys make the best decision if you are looking to say get on a Ryzen 9 or maybe you should just save some money and get on a Ryzen 7, especially if you are just say more gaming than you're doing productivity work. However, that aside, we will look at the productivity benchmarks first because I believe if you're getting a 16 core 32 threaded CPU, you're probably gonna be using it for something really productive and really strenuous. And here is where we're gonna start off with the chaos benchmarks, starting with V-Ray. And we saw a significant increase in performance here over the Ryzen 9 7950X. And it was to the tune of roughly nearly 25%. So that's a huge uplift in performance. And then we move over to Geekbench 6. And here is where we saw a nearly 15% boost in single thread performance, but also on the multi-core performance, we did see roughly 10% uh, uplift there. So the uplifts already are looking pretty good. And this spans across the Cinebench where we do get a significant uplift here too, both on the single core and the multi-core. And then looking at the next benchmark here, I probably shouldn't say the name of this so early in the video, you might get censored for it, but hey, we've got here a massive uplift in performance going from 13.2 million to 15.7 million. And then the final benchmark that didn't show much of a difference at all was 7-zip, where we went from 235 gips from 230. So overall, that looked like a pretty impressive display. And if we also look at the power consumption numbers, here is where we had 384 watts from the wall on the 7950X versus a little over 340 from the 9950X. So power consumption was in favor of the newer Ryzen 9 with that performance uplift. So that was good to see considering we're going with a high performance cooler here today on a B650E Tai Chi Lite motherboard. And so the 420 mil cooler could keep this thing under 80 degrees at all times, which was also good to see too. As opposed to the 7950X, out of the box, this thing just goes sky high in terms of power consumption and also temperatures. And this is something that I have critiqued in the past with the 7950X. So for me personally, I'm actually delighted to see the tune on the 9950X out of the box is actually pretty impressive. Though here's where that impressiveness stops and it's something that I'm gonna critique about the 9950X in particular because when I'm benchmarking this CPU, something that I've noticed and also another YouTuber called Frame Chasers pointed this out when they were checking out the 9950X is that the discrepancy between the speeds on the two CCDs. So basically when it comes to a Ryzen 9 like the 7950X or the 9950X, you have two CCDs on board the CPU itself. And so one of them has eight cores, the other has eight cores. But the problem with the 9950X here is that you've got eight cores that are performing really well. They're going up to what I'm seeing here is 5.725 gigahertz maximum on all those cores. And then the other eight cores are going up to maximum 5.45 gigahertz. So that's nearly a 300 megahertz discrepancy here on the maximum cores. And so in other words, AMD is giving you eight inferior cores and then eight good cores. And in fact, the eight inferior cores we're seeing are lower in speed than say a Ryzen 7 9700X. So it makes you wonder what AMD is thinking here when they're binning out their flagship Ryzen 9. It is something worth critiquing and it's something that I guess if you're buying a Ryzen 9 and spending that top premium dollar, I would like to see you get those 5.725 gigahertz cores on all those CPUs across those two C CCDs instead of this sort of weird binning. And now don't get me wrong, this does happen on the Ryzen 9 7950X, but it's to the tune of when I was looking at my testing around 150 megahertz. So in other words, it's much less pronounced on the previous Ryzen 9 as it is on this newer Ryzen 9, which I guess if you're buying this and then you're checking out that performance, it kind of makes you just feel like a little bit like, oh damn, I just spent all this money to get flagship and I'm kind of getting eight cores that are inferior to the Ryzen 7 9700X. However, that said, overall, the productivity is still really good. And also, if you are into manually tuning this CPU and extracting the most out of just getting a raw clock, which we will go to in more depth 
when I start doing my personal build and showing you guys how I tune my system, you can just get a raw 5.25 gigahertz across all 16 cores that's just locked in place all the time. And that's gonna be very responsive on this particular CPU. And it's also going to give you a Cinebench uh, score that we tested here that can go all the way up over 45,000 points. So Cinebench R23, at least the benchmark we're using here, is very intense on those CPU cores. And so when we're doing these benchmarks, the CPUs themselves are dropping down to 4.9 gigahertz in this particular benchmark. But when it comes to gaming, for instance, those CPU cores will be going up to 5.7 gigahertz, which is what we talked about before. Also, if you are into undervolting, Ryzen 9000, just like Ryzen 7000, does benefit from using the curve optimizer with a negative curve. You can generally go all the way from 10 steps to 20 steps to 30 steps. In this case, we saw a nice improvement going to 30 steps. So now it's time to look at the gaming benchmarks. And here is where we've got some really odd results with our Ryzen 9 9950X. Now, for starters, I did test Windows 10 and I did compare that against Windows 11 just quickly. And Windows 10 was performing better overall on the 9950X. The problem was we just got some really odd results in some of these benchmarks. The first of which is Gears 5, which was a game that we've been uh, benchmarking recently due to controversy surrounding Windows 10 versus Windows 11. And here's where we got roughly matching performance between a 7950X and the 9950X. However, if we disable a CCD completely, we can then pick that FPS up, very similar to that of a 9700X. And now if you're also wondering if you can manually tune the core affinity on this particular benchmark, the answer is no, it actually locks you out from tuning anything in terms of core affinity on this benchmark. It's the only one I've seen where you can't do anything with that. And also Process Lasso cannot do this either. Though moving on to Cyberpunk 2077, here's where out of the box the 9950X did give out a pretty impressive display here, beating that of the 7950X, but also you didn't need to in this particular benchmark, uh, disable CCDs or use Process Lasso. It actually gave quite some impressive results out of the box. Though moving on to Baldur's Gate 3, here is another pretty impressive result from the 9950X, beating that of the 7950X and coming very close to that of the uh, 9700X2. So there's nothing you're missing out on here in this particular benchmark. They're going over to Far Cry 6. You are losing performance if you just leave this on the out of the box settings. And here's where the 7950X actually comes in with the dub. But then of course, if you use something like Process Lasso in this particular benchmark, you can recoup that performance going all the way up to as much as 241 FPS, coming very, again, very close to that 9700X figure. And moving on to Harry Potter, here's where we got a very similar score between the 7950X and the 9950X, and also using Process Lasso didn't change much, but then we're saving the best till last. And this is Age of Mythology. And here is where we saw an anomaly, where the 9950X then beat out the 7800X3D, not just the 7950X, but also the 7800X3D. So the one benchmark, and you sometimes see this, and that makes me then understand the benchmark more. So what this tells me is that Age of Mythology, for instance, loves that single thread IPC, and here is where the 9950X, especially on that first CCD, is absolutely delivering, and it's doing so with great 0.1% lows too. Though the final thing to talk about is the power consumption whilst we're gaming. And here's where we saw roughly the same between the 7950X and the 9950X. We'll use up a little bit more power because we just got all those extra cores there. And even if they're idle, they are using up a little bit more power than say just a straight eight core 16 threads. So again though, if you're gaming, you're going to see that the 7800X 3D is definitely still the way to go, at least until the 9800X 3D is released. Or you may consider if you're on a budget, especially something like the 7500F, which is just gonna give you extremely good value for money. Or of course, you got a lot of more used options out there that are gonna provide really good bang for buck, especially off AliExpress. We've checked out a lot of these CPUs and you can definitely get more value than a Ryzen 9 9950X. Pretty much gonna be one of the worst value CPUs in the new field for just raw gaming, if that's what you're looking at doing. So with that aside, we're gonna sum up this CPU, and that is it's productivity first, hence why I put the productivity numbers at the start of this video. It's 16 cores, 32 threads, and it does deliver in terms of some of those benchmarks that we see there. So basically, in a nutshell, with this CPU, if productivity is your main focus, if that's all you do on your computer, or that's the main amount of time you're spending on a computer, for instance, me, I'm doing a lot of video editing for you guys uh, versus playing games, then something like the 9950X is definitely gonna make a lot of sense. Now, 
One thing I do have to do with the CPU is I'm gonna be using it as my main rig over the next few months and then coming back with a video and update and talking about all the nuances and things that I like and dislike about using the latest CPU and how it interacts with certain programs. And all that stuff, I can't tell you until I've used it for a few months. So I do look forward to giving you that video in the future. But in the meantime, it does look like this CPU is impressive and it does feel extremely responsive, especially when we lock all the cores at 5.25 gigahertz after tuning it. However, after that, if you wanna to go to say 5.35 gigahertz or 5.4 gigahertz, especially in these uh, benchmarks that use AVX2 and things like that, then the power consumption is just gonna run away. And in fact, 5.4 gigahertz, I couldn't get a stable for running Cinebench, it just crashed out and black screened. And at that stage, the power consumption was just going sky high. So it looks like 5.25 gigahertz tune on all cores, set and forget is a good option if you're looking for a quick and easy answer there. And that's also gonna be very responsive too. And it just feels like the snappiest Ryzen CPU to date as well, uh, not just on the 9700X, but also the 9950X with that manual tune is really providing some great snappy desktop experience when I'm using it. So with the 9950X, in a nutshell, summing this thing up, look at the benchmarks, look at what you do in your personal workflow. If you can get an extra boost in terms of performance, hence it's gonna save you time, then it may be worth considering. But if, for instance, if you're decompressing and compressing files all day long, and you're looking at the 7950X, then you're gonna get a not just a better value pick, but you're also gonna get very similar performance. So there's really not going to be a lot to be had out of upgrading to a 9950X there. But say for instance, if you're rendering 3D images all day, every day, then you're gonna actually benefit a lot from a 9950X. And so that extra 150 so dollars that you'd pay for the 9950X over the 7950X may be extremely worthwhile for your time. And that's what it all comes down to, making the best purchase decision for what you do in your daily life. And then also after you finish your work and you wanna play some games, you're also gonna have some pretty impressive performance there. It's not gonna be 7800X3D performance, but it's still gonna be really good. And for me personally, I think that's how I look at those FPS figures. They're definitely good enough. <laughs> and I wouldn't certainly complain about any of the CPUs that we had in the charts here for gaming. Though also, if you have a two CCD CPU, like a 9950X, a 7950X, or even a 7950X 3D, then stay tuned. We've got a video coming up on power profiles, balance versus high performance. And there's some very interesting results to extract there and show you guys. So with all that aside, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. And also if you have any questions or comments, about today's video, be sure to drop them down below. And with that aside, I look forward to giving you guys the next video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.